welcome to Catalan News. Mayors started to appear in court today in support of the independence referendum. 761 out of 948 have already said that they will collaborate with the vote, and they all face prosecution. Meanwhile, Madrid wants to control what the Catalan government spends, but Barcelona is fighting hard against it. Here at Catalan News, get all the details on this and much more. Let's start. Polling stations for the upcoming independence referendum are still a mystery, with only 12 days before the vote. And so are the names of the polling supervisors. Why? Because the letters that were supposed to notify them about their role have been confiscated today by the Spanish police. Citizens are warned that if they collaborate with the referendum, they will be participating in an illegal activity. And mayors have started to face the pressure as well. Spain's investigation into 75% of Catalan mayors is taking shape. Three mayors in Western Catalonia were the first to appear at different prosecutor's offices today, but they weren't alone. Members of the public gathered to support them as they entered the courthouses. Inside, all three of the mayors refused to answer any questions. However, today's hearings are just the tip of the iceberg. Some dozens of mayors are due to appear in court in the coming days. Not a few in Catalonia find it outrageous. In fact, the Catalan Public Diplomacy Council reported today that Spain is threatening civil rights to stop the referendum. But Spain's ruling party doesn't agree. It's very lamentable to see how 700 alcaldes have been disobeyed and they have to go to give explanations in front of the justice. But for the sake, our country is a country where it respects the democracy and it respects the democracy. La libertad y a mí me parece que es un buen ejemplo. While local officials were appearing in court, Spain's military police appeared at two delivery depots. Guardia Civil officers raided Unipost firm warehouses in search of census cards. They were also looking for Catalan government letters notifying citizens that they'd been chosen as polling agents, and reports say they found a number of them. We can speak now with one Catalan mayor who is also an MEP, Jordi Solé. Thank you for joining us today here at Catalan News, Mr. Solé. You yourself are a mayor of the town of Caldes de Montbui. What do you think of the Spanish justice pledging to prosecute mayors who collaborate with the referendum? Good evening. Well, I think this is again a mistake uh, from the side of the Spanish authorities, a, mis a mistake that shows again uh, the low quality of the Spanish democracy for me is uh, unacceptable and I think for a big, big majority of citizens in Catalonia it's unacceptable that elected politicians um, are threatened even with uh, uh, criminal charges and maybe with prison uh, by the fact that they have or we have uh, said that we'll, we will always stand by the, by the side of the citizens and we will always protect their fundamental rights and their right to, to vote. So I think uh, once again the Spanish version of democracy shows its, its, its lack of uh, real uh, fundamentals, uh, real basis uh, of uh, fundamental rights and civil liberties and political uh, liberties and I, and I think um, people are seeing that uh, Spain, the Spanish authorities are crossing uh, some red lines and they shouldn't have done that. You're the only Catalan mayor who is also a member of the European Parliament. What are the implications of that? As a member of the European Parliament, uh, I have parliamentary immunity. That means that uh, in order to be prosecuted, the Parliament has to decide whether or not they leave uh, my immu immunity. Uh, that means that the Spanish authorities have to send a request to the European Parliament, that the Committee on Justice and Civil Liberties have to discuss the issue. I will have the possibility to defend myself before the members of that committee. And then the opinion of, the, of that committee will go uh, into the plenary, where all, where all the MEPs will have to vote uh, if they uh, think that um, defending dem democracy is, uh, is, is, is a crime, is a delict, um, uh, strong enough to, to leave my parliamentary immunity. And continuing with the European Parliament, you and some of your Catalan colleagues have been active in denouncing Spain's actions against the referendum. 
Could you explain to us what you've done? So every time the Spanish authorities cross a red line, uh, they will get our reaction, the reaction of uh, the MEPs, clearly Catalan MEPs, clearly committed with the basic fundamental uh, rights of uh, citizens in Catalonia and specifically uh, right to vote, uh, right to participate in, in politics, uh, free expression, free opinion and, and so on. So we have decided that uh, in every action coming from them will have our reaction and this reaction can mean for example denouncing uh, the events that uh, are uh, have been unfolding this last uh, couple of days uh, to the European Commission, for example, also to the president, to the chairman of the uh, Justice, uh, Home Affairs and Civil Liberties uh, Committee, because we want that everybody realizes, that everybody knows what's happening right now in a member state of the European Union in, in Spain concerning the violations of fundamental rights and we want to s stop with this strategy because um, our sit uh, freedoms, our uh, rights as European citizens are, are being threatened and every everybody should be aware uh, of that in the European Parliament and in the European institutions. Thank you very much, Jordi Soler. While Catalan MEPs try to get the European Commission to react, an actual former president of the institution, Italian Romano Prodi, did so today. In a manifesto signed with other Italian politicians, Prodi urged Catalonia and Spain to return to political dialogue and warned that it's Parliament and not the courts nor the police that should resolve what he sees as a political problem. Prodi met with Catalan President Carles Puigdemont last April precisely to discuss the political stalemate in Catalonia. Let's continue with this because the Catalan and Spanish governments keep hustling for control of spending. While Madrid says Catalans cannot be trusted to spend money on essential public services, Barcelona accuses Madrid of trying to suspend its self-government using a backdoor tactic. It might happen within a matter of hours. Catalan officials who try to pay with their credit cards may find that they have been blocked. Banks have been warned by the Spanish government not to accept any payments coming from Catalan ministers unless they have been authorized by Madrid. According to the Spanish government, it is a needed measure to avoid any money being spent on the referendum. For Barcelona, it amounts to political control, both unjustified and illegal. A means of suppressing self-government whilst avoiding the long and costly parliamentary procedure that would actually allow it. Es un pas més en la intervenció econòmica i política de la Generalitat de Catalunya que no deixa de ser un intent de suspendre l'autonomia per la porta del darrere. Today, the Supreme Court admitted the appeal of the Catalan government against the measure. The Spanish government ascertains that it wants payments made directly to health services or education on the grounds that Barcelona cannot be trusted due to independence plans. But the government says one thing has nothing to do with the other. ¿Qué te que veure, uh, la factura d'un paracetamol amb el referèndum al qual els ciutadans de Catalunya decidiran democràticament sobre el seu futur? ¿Qué te que veure? The Catalan vice president warned that the budgetary stability law is being used for political objectives and insisted that his government is being responsible with spending, reducing deficit at a faster pace than Spain with an economy that is growing strongly. Good economic figures actually mean good business for Catalan and international companies. In fact, in the middle of the independence process, Catalonia is achieving record numbers of international investment, with big companies such as Amazon and Hard Rock injecting a lot of money in the country. And the last one to open a business here brings good news for eco-friendly car lovers. The innovative car company Tesla today opened its first showroom in Catalonia. The American firm has chosen L'Hospitalet del Llobregat, a city located right next to Barcelona. The dealership, Tesla First in Spain, includes a service center for car owners, a workshop, and will also have vehicles on show. There are already two models available, the S and the X. The company's most affordable vehicle, the Tesla Model 3, will come to the stores next year. So far, Tesla has sold just a few hundred cars in Spain, but the company is committed to expanding its presence. Two more centers will soon open their doors in Barcelona. 
So far, Tesla has sold just a few hundred cars in Spain, but the company is committed to expanding its presence. Two more centers will soon open their doors in Barcelona. Tesla will also expand its network of superchargers, the overall goal to democratize the use of electric cars. Tener un vehículo eléctrico es algo mucho más cotidiano y accesible para todos y eso es lo, el mensaje que queremos transmitir, que la movilidad eléctrica no es algo del futuro, es algo de aquí que está hoy y, y que se puede acceder con nuestros vehículos. But Tesla is not the only international company with its eye on Catalonia. Last year, the country received a record-breaking 5 billion euros in foreign investment. Another recent indicator showing Catalonia's good economic health is the container traffic in Barcelona's port, which has gone up 30% since last year. It's a figure that makes the port of Barcelona the fastest growing in Europe in this sector. Let's continue with internationalization of culture. This year, Catalonia will take part in the Buenos Aires Biennial of Architecture and will go to Venice as well in 2018. It's a great moment for Catalan architects, especially since the studio from the country won this year's Pritzker Award, seen as the Architecture Nobel Prize. A cutting edge side of Catalan culture, its innovative architecture, is going to be shown worldwide, from Buenos Aires to Venice. Indeed, Barcelona was invited to participate in the Argentine Biennale, held in just a month, because of its uniquely human approach to architecture. Presenta la mirada de la gent del carrer, del sector artístic sobre l'arquitectura de Barcelona, és a dir, passen a ser les persones més importants que les construccions, que els edificis. Barcelona's exhibition in Buenos Aires is co-organized by the Ramon Llull Institute, one of Barcelona's biggest cultural entities. The Institute was also charged with coordinating the Catalan presence at Venice Architecture Biennale in 2018. The architecture studio selected for 2018, RCR Arquitectas, will have a dual exhibition, one inviting the observer into their world and another unveiling a new project. Soon, they will make even more specific plans for the exhibition once they choose a co-curator for the ambitious project. Venice will not be the first time that RCR Arquitectas goes international. While you can already see the work at Biblioteca San Juan Antonio Joan Ullé in Barcelona, their designs can also be found as far as Belgium, France and Dubai. The three-member studio was also awarded what's known as the Nobel Prize of Architecture, the prestigious Pritzker Award, in March. And with this, we finish today's show. Thanks for watching. We leave you with some images from a rumba concert, a style of music that is very much from here. Enjoy and see you tomorrow.